This is David Hartful from Black Leader Analysis, and I want to talk to you today about ethnic identity development, also known as nigrizance. Um, this is a psychological method developed by Dr. William Cross and colleagues. It is the psychology of becoming black, and that means that a person grows to include their blackness and Africanity into their worldview and how they interact with the world. This is peer-reviewed peer psychological research, first proposed in 1971, then revised in 1991, and again in 2001. And this framework that I'm about to share with you has been used for many different ethnicities and identities, including the LGBTQ identity and other nationalities. So there are five stages to ethnic identity development. The first one is pre-encounter. That's the time period before a person starts using their blackness to interact with the world. There's the encounter, which is an event or series of events that forces a person to start using their Africanity to interact and deal with the world. There is the immersion, immersion stage where someone delves completely into their ethnicity to learn everything about it and then look disparagingly on other people and other ethnicities. And then internalization where someone uses their blackness and can relate authentically to the world but still deal with other aspects of who they are, other identities, and people that disagree with them. And the last stage is internalization commitment, when a person is motivated to help those within the ethnicity without fighting against those outside of it or disparaging those outside of the ethnicity. So in more detail, the stages of ethnic identity development or nigrizance start off in the pre-encounter stage. So in pre-encounter, this is the stage that everybody goes to through and everybody has some aspect of their personality within this stage. So at first, Dr. Cross and his colleagues believed that the stage was centered around self-hate, but after they did more research, they understood that many things can keep a person from using their ethnicity to inform their worldview. So in this stage, people see blackness disparagingly, something that separates them from people, and something that is a negative on their life. And they exalt the Eurocentric worldview, or the American worldview, which puts mainstream culture at a forefront as the only valid way to interact with the world. So each of these stages have identity clusters, which is subdivisions within the stage that people fall into. And these stages are going to help us understand how the types of people in these stages are interacting with the world and why they are forming their worldview the way they are. So the first identity culture within pre-encounter is assimilated. So in assimilated, the person has a low race saliency, but a high saliency with another identity, such as American or their class or being a woman. So they see blackness chiefly as something that is separating them from everyone else and causing stigma and they don't see how blackness can be used in a positive way to inform and grow their worldview they also have a stated preference of preferring to be around non-black people the second identity cluster is self-hatred in this identity culture, a person has a high saliency with blackness, but they only see it as a negative. They disparage black features like wide noses and dark skin, and they see blackness as something chiefly to get away from and move past. They have, uh, they have a serious liking and affinity to Eurocentric art and disparage black art like jazz or hip-hop. The last identity culture cluster is miseducation. And in the miseducation identity cl cluster, a person is just ill-informed on 
all the achievements of uh, black people in America and in Africa and all the aspects of African and black culture that could help and improve their life and the life of people all over the world. A good example of this would be Kimberly Daniels, who is a state representative in Florida, who's famous for saying that she's uh, grateful for slavery because it ensured that she wouldn't be in Africa worshiping a tree. So this is just someone who's uninformed and don't doesn't understand that Christianity in Africa predates Christianity in Europe and plenty of Africans willingly converted to Christianity. So she's just a very ill-informed, ignorant person that just needs to be re-educated more than it's about uh, self-hatred or assimilating. So the encounter phase. Now the encounter phase is, or stage, is another area, but it has no identity clusters because the encounter stage is either an event or a series of events that force a person to start looking and evaluating their Africanity and blackness in their worldview. So in this stage, there's a lot of anxiety about social conformity. So they're in situations where people are treating them differently because they're black. And those people could be white people or other black people. And they're forced to recreate their worldview and recreate the way they're interacting with the world and have it informed by blackness and this idea that they have a unique place in society. So that's what the encounter stage is. So the next stage after that would be immersion, immersion. So in this stage, there's two sub-stages. So the immersion stage with an I means you're being thrown into a culture. These people throw themselves in a culture and their whole worldview is just to learn and delve into every part of the African diaspora, African culture, and black American culture. So they're spending an exorbitant amount of time reading up on black literature, black psychologists, black social scientists, and they're spending a lot of time disparaging everything outside of the culture or what they see as outside of the culture. So these are people who are setting themselves up to be in very dangerous confrontations with the power structure. They're getting in very non-productive arguments with people from outside their culture or just with a different worldview. The second stage of this is the immersion with an E stage, uh, substage, and that's when you're fully immersed in the culture and the internalization is starting, is beginning at this point. So there are a lot more uh, nuance with how they approach the world. They have much more, much safer confrontations with the power structure and they can also interact and see other points of view. So in this immersion stage, a person could go through so much turmoil because this is a very traumatic, turbulent stage that they just drop out of uh, black culture completely or they just stay stuck in it and they just keep fighting and banging their head against the wall and fighting everything. Now, in integral terms, these people suffer from a lot of pre-trans fallacy. So they get confused between people in the assimilated pre-encounter stage and the post multiculturalist phase where they've grown internalized their blackness and other aspects of who they are to where they have a more well-rounded worldview and so they just see both of these people within their culture within blackness as against them so they'll spend a lot of time calling people uncle toms and saying people are brainwashed and they're not really looking at the nuances of these opposing arguments and seeing the good and the negative sides of it. And they're grouping all of them together as pathological. So uh, from an integral perspective, that's something we expect from somebody entering into a new phase, a new stage. So the emergent stage is chiefly there to destroy the old pre-encounter identity and build a new identity based off Africanity. So there's a lot of guilt there about times in the past where they didn't speak up about blackness and defense of black people when they probably should have. And there's a lot of anger at the system at large. And that's going to bring us to our identity cultures, clusters. So the first identity culture uh, cluster is anti-white. So these are people that just are blaming whites for everything. 
They want to constantly be fighting. They look at white people as simply the enemy. And they're, they're just wanting to fight all the time. So having an anger, I want to drive home the point that being angry or mistrustful of the white power structure is a rational conclusion after studying history and current events. However, that's not the best way to interact with the world. And people need to learn and move past to that. So the anti-white uh, cluster is the identity cost cluster that most people have problems with. And they see them as just angry black people who can't understand uh, what's going on and other factors that could be causing different societal problems. Now the intense black involvement is a separate identity cluster. So these people aren't as much fighting whites as anybody else, but what they're doing is just finding out ways they can build the healthiest black culture. And they're not really worried about bringing in allies from other cultures or reframing what they're saying to not offend people. They're just, they can be sometimes bulls in China shops. Because they're just looking at doing what the best thing is for black people and not taking into account how it's coming off to other people or how to uh, find allies in other, in other cultures. So that's that separate identity cluster there. So again, time moves on and the next stage manifests. And the next stage is internalization. So these are people that are showing up in the world authentically black, but still very much social. So they've integrated other parts of their identity. They can dialogue with people that disagree with them. And they're not just always putting themselves in very dangerous situations confronting uh, white supremacy or the power structure. And so because they've took, taken time to build their ethnic identity, they can handle insults from outside of their culture that are, that are racist. And they can handle insults and feedback from people within their culture saying they don't have a good perspective or saying that they're anti-black or saying that they're brainwashed. So they can handle insults coming from both. They can also critique people within and outside their culture in a constructive manner that they can handle in here. It gives them a foundation also to absorb information. So if they're in a situation discussing something with someone and the other person is disparaging black people, blaming the most vulnerable members of our culture for different societal problems, they'll speak up and give a counter argument to that. And they're not going to just let someone just dis who doesn't understand our culture disparage it. They're no longer worried about being ethnic enough because they can handle criticism from within their culture and without their with and without and from without their culture, those coming in. And so they just have a generally healthy, robust personality that can deal with all the various um, feedback they're getting from society. And they're less likely to suffer from low self-esteem than someone in a previous phase. So the identity clusters in internalization. The first one is the black nationalist. Now, the way Dr. Cross describes a black nationalist is someone who is chiefly interested in African culture and black culture and not actively seeking to interact with other cultures. So that's not the same as the black version of a white nationalist who's trying to oppress people and put people down and say people are inferior. The way Dr. Cross describes a black nationalist is someone who simply understands his culture and wants to stay within it. So then we also have biculturalists who take their American identity and their African identity and can put them together. And there are times when they let their a a American identity lead and there are times when they take let their African identity lead. And then he also found two types of multiculturalists. The first is a multiculturalist emphasis on racial which allows people from various races to come in and be allies and build bridges with and they can also understand things from other cultural perspectives and other identities now multicultural inclusive includes LGBT and white men in the coalition to fight the power structure 
and to grow. Now, he came up with this idea of multiculturalist inclusion inclusive back in 2001, and it'd be interesting to see how these cultural identities have changed over the years. But um, he, de he decided in 2001 it was good to separate the multiculturalists into those who include LGBT and white men and those who don't and just include other non-white minorities. Now the final stage is internalization commitment. Now in this stage, a person has internalized who they are, they have the internal fortitude to withstand pressures coming from within their community and outside their community. And they have chosen to spend uh, most of their time helping people within their ethnicity. Not because they think other ethnicities are inferior or all out to get us. It's because they understand that they have more saliency with people they have a common experience with. And so that's what's motivating their commitment and not just anger and hate at outsiders. So my main takeaways from this is that I want to drive home. This is a theory that came through the African Studies Department. So when people like Shelby Steele and Larry Elder try to act like the African Studies Department is just coming up with elaborate ways to blame white folks for stuff, this is your pushback. They're giving you very valid information to help you inform your worldview and grow your worldview. Um, this is a legitimate scientific theory. This is something that has um, uh, tons of research on it. Many people have peer reviewed it. Many people have critiqued it. Also, everyone has an ethnicity. And understanding how your ethnicity informs your worldview will show you your strengths and it will show you areas you could be have a blind spot in. So by understanding your own ethnicity, you can actually grow a lot. And you can also understand other cultural perspectives once you understand how your own cultural perspective affects you. And then the second is ethnicity can be a positive thing. It doesn't have to be something that just separates people. It can be something that informs how we live. It can be something that lands as a jumping off point to br build bridges with other people. If you've gone through some similar experience as them or their people group, you can start talking to them about that. And it can be a very uh, beautiful, inclusive thing. So that's all for this presentation. If you enjoyed what you heard, please donate at um, sdandrace at gmail.com through PayPal. And uh, please follow my WordPress blog and join the Facebook group Black Leadership Analysis. Thank you.